Flame, there you are. I've been looking everywhere for you. Uh, you worry too much, brother. I think a kidnapping is good cause for concern. I was so worried about you, I nearly fainted. Had that not happened, I would have never been allowed to join the professor's class. Even from something so dire, some good did come of it. That is a dangerous attitude. This world is full of peril. You must be more vigilant. Please understand, I allowed you to enroll here only because I thought it best for your safety. I am very much aware of that. You wanted to speak to me of something? Yes, my dear little sister. You are kind beyond all measure, and you are the very picture of innocence. But precisely because of these very fine qualities, I worry about your interactions with the others here. This year's students are particularly eccentric. As your brother, it is my duty to help you with any concerns you may have. I do appreciate the offer, but all the students and professors have treated me exceptionally well. Even so, there must be at least some worry. Please, you need not conceal anything from me. You worry far too much. There is truly nothing to share, and nothing for you to fret over. Are you absolutely sure? The idea of you suffering in silence is unbearable to me. Enough! I made it clear that nothing is wrong. I stand by my word. Well, there is one concern that comes to mind. What is it? Tell me. I will help however I can. There is a certain somebody who seems determined to get in the way of my friendships with my classmates. What? That's horrible! Fear not. I will handle this scoundrel for you. Just tell me his name. It is you, brother. Now then, I must be on my way. What was Flame getting at just now? Let's see, I was speaking to her. I asked her to share her concerns, and was there something else? <laughs> no matter. Fear not, Flane. Your brother will protect you from all harm. Brother? Flane, is something the matter? I thought I made it clear that I do not want you meddling in the affairs of me and my friends. I am not quite sure what you are referring to, but I promise you I would never try to stand in your way. It has come to my attention that you have been running about asking people what they think of me. Asking everyone! Well, of course I have. It took me quite some time. But for you, it was well worth the effort. I was able to confirm that you are getting along well with everyone. It was very reassuring. I cannot emphasize enough how embarrassed I was when I found out. And you have caused such a stir for those whom you questioned. Why, one person even said he feared for his life when you cornered him in the dining hall. The dining hall? Ah, I know the fellow you are referring to. Yes, I've seen the way he looks at you. I recognized in an instant that he had impure feelings for you. As your brother, I took it upon myself to test his resolve. I merely asked him if he was prepared to lay his life on the line for my beloved sister. He is nothing more than a friend! Kindly keep out of my social business in the future! I am happy to see that you are making friends, but you should weigh your options more carefully. Who I befriend is absolutely none of your business! Do you know what they call people like you? Overprotective meddlers! I am no longer a child! Are you incapable of trusting me, even a little? Of course I trust you, but as an elder brother, I have a certain responsibility. As my brother? Obviously. Oh, never mind it. If you'll excuse me. Flame. Here to pester me, brother? No. I think I'm the one who ought to be pestered. Regardless of what I say to you, it is not as though it has any effect in reducing your worry over me. That is true. No matter where you are, 
And no matter what you're doing, I will always worry. But that's only because I treasure you so very much. Please understand, I'm not trying to hurt you. Of that I am well aware. I am touched that you care so deeply. When I think of it, it is my own fault that you have become so overprotective. I cannot blame you. No, the fault is entirely mine. You were still so young. I placed far too much strain on you, and our lack of resources was no excuse. Worse, I failed to watch you during the battle. Your mother, too. We... lost her because of me. Afterward, it broke my heart to see how much you would need to rest just to survive. I swore that I would dedicate every moment remaining in my life to your protection. Ever since then, I have been afraid of falling asleep. My fear of sleeping is outmatched only by my fear of spending my life alone. Even if it cannot last, I want to live among my peers as one of them, as an ordinary person, similar to how you and Mother coexisted with your own comrades back then, fighting side by side. Quite right. I know you must leave the nest someday. No matter how many ages our lives may span, I know that's the way of it. Father... Don't. Nobody is listening, Father. Let me address you as such just this once. I have valued the quiet days you and I have spent alone together, but I am no longer a child. Just as you and Mother met one another, and eventually I was brought into the world, I... I know. Please, no more. No matter what happens, you are my daughter. It gives me great joy to see you grow. But please, at least until this war is over, let me continue to worry. You're the most precious person in my life. I can't bear the thought of losing you. It seems I have no choice in the matter. I shall allow you to worry about me enough for yourself and mother both. But only that much and no more, my dear Father Keyhole. Thank you, Sethleen. <laughs>